every Christian could use some apologetics training. Even if you don't need to take an entire class on apologetics or read a series of books on the subject, we should all be ready, according to Peter, to make a defense of the faith that we hold. Now, the Apostle Peter doesn't say, look for a pastor who's really good at defending your faith or or have a specific book to give out so that others can read that, but you be ready to defend your faith. And I don't think it's exceedingly difficult to be ready because outside of a few special cases that we'll run into, and we all love building up those those occasions in our mind as if those people show up far more often than they do. Most people have similar objections to believing in Jesus as Savior. The thing is, a lot of people in the church are intimidated by apologetics, or they don't think they have the time or the aptitude for it, when nothing could be further from the truth. First, we've all been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So when it comes to giving a defense, you will never do so alone. Second, you heard enough of the truth yourself to convince you of the gospel, and maybe what convinced you of the gospel is all you need to know to share it with others. The third thing we need to know is that learning apologetics doesn't need to be difficult. For instance, J. Warner Wallace's Person of Interest was one of the most enjoyable books I have ever read. It's even filled with really great illustrations throughout. And now we have Stephen Cutchins' Prove It. And this book demonstrates that point again. Apologetics doesn't need to be difficult. In a book that ends on page 90 before a bullet point review of what go- what of the subject of this book, which again makes it really easy and helpful to understand and digest with that overview, Cutchins can help you to feel confident to speak to someone from another faith or talking about why it's not absurd to believe in miracles, and dealing with what might be the biggest objection to the gospel for so many, the problem of evil and pain. And Stephen covers all of that in only 90 pages. So if you want to get a handle on how to defend the Christian faith, but you don't have a lot of time to do it, you find a lot of the arguments go right over your head, well, prove it is a great place to start. Welcome to Rev Reads. If you want to discover more books that will help you to learn about how to defend the Christian faith, please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my latest book reviews. Also, like and share this video with others. It is your likes that help others know about the work of Stephen Cutchins. Now, Prove It is broken into three main sections. The first gives you a foundation. You talk about the major truths that we rest our faith upon, one that we can be confident that there is even a truth at all, which is weird that we have to argue that there is truth, but that's beside the point, followed by the truth of God and the logical subject to follow, the truth of miracles. And suddenly you'll get to see that the idea of miracles isn't so ridiculous once you believe in the existence of God. Second, Cutchin spends two chapters talking about the other major world religions and the rise of cults. This will help you to not get thrown off if you're dealing with a cult member. But my advice to you is don't be concerned about cults. If you're confronted by one, clearly present the gospel to them in simple terms. But if they want to debate and argue with them, tell them you would love to discuss this more with them, but you don't have the time, and then set up a time to do that later. And if they're willing, in that time before your next meeting, that's when you can learn more about Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever group it may be. Finally, the last third of the book, and this is the best part of the book, it is Cutchins helping you work through the problem of evil. He is first honest about the problem that unbelievers and skeptics have. How can God be all-powerful and all-good And yet there's still so much evil in this world. Because I think it's easy to think, well, I might not be all powerful. I might not be all good. But but if I had a lot more power, I could end a lot of the suffering in this world. So it seems like God either isn't as good or isn't as powerful as he claims. And I love how Cutchins answers this 
complaint. First, we need to understand that while God is the author of everything, evil is not a thing. It is the absence of good. God didn't create evil. He didn't ordain sin. God created people in his image with freedom, and freedom is good. But we've taken that good gift of freedom, and we have brought evil into this world. God made evil possible by giving us the good gift of freedom. And we took that freedom and made evil. We made the mistake. Human beings did, and not God. And why does evil continue? Simple answer. If we did not have the choice to do evil, we would not have the choice to do good. And it is good for us to make choices. But because of the curse and our weakened state, we're not just in a position with the opportunity to choose evil. All of us are born prone to evil. Then Cutchin covers why God hasn't defeated evil. And I love his symphony illustration that you'll find in this book with the concluding point that while God can defeat evil, it's not just that he can, but he has promised us that one day his son will return and he will defeat evil. Which leads to my favorite quote in the book. We in the church, those who believe in Christ, and this isn't a limited group or offer, but we make this hope available for everyone. You too only need to believe in Christ for this to be your future. And then Cutchins writes, This is not supposed to be the best of all possible worlds. This is the best of all possible ways to the best of all possible worlds. We are going through dark days right now. And it's been that way ever since Adam ate the fruit. And these days are going to continue in the present. But for those who fix their eyes on Christ, look to him who is seated at the right hand of God, you can be confident that you are on your way toward the best of all possible ends in the eternal state of the new heaven and the new earth. So while evil continues, hope is available in Christ. So this is really good work by Stephen Cutchins. It's easy to read, it's beneficial for all, and a great tool to help in your evangelistic conversations. Prove it. When someone asks you to prove it, are you ready to give a defense?